Hello everybody, I'm Jared Rosenholtz with CarBuzz.com and I'm here reviewing the 2018 Kia Niro Plug-In Hybrid. So we've reviewed the regular hybrid Kia Niro, but this is the plug-in version which adds a larger battery that gives you up to 26 miles of electric driving range, which is pretty interesting. Uh, the one I have here is the fully loaded on the plug-in hybrid version, the EX Premium trim. So ours comes in at around $34,000 uh, before federal tax incentives. So I'm going to take you uh, around the exterior of the Kia Niro, which I think is the biggest win for Kia in this plug-in hybrid segment. And I think that's because they made it look like a normal car. There isn't that much that sets this car apart from a standard crossover other than these little grills right here that are these little uh, blue pieces. It's like an electric blue. Other than that, you really don't get the impression that this is anything more than a normal crossover, which is something that other hybrids in the past, like the Honda Insight and Toyota Prius, have never been able to do. And this is a crossover. It's not a very tall one. It's almost like a tall riding hatchback rather than a full crossover. But the good thing about that is people absolutely love crossovers right now. And it seems crazy that Toyota or Honda have never taken the Prius or Insight models and just raised them up a little bit as Kia did with this. Uh, styling wise, I think there's nothing spectacular about the design here, but I think that is the best thing about the Kia Niro, is that it doesn't stand out as a hybrid. If you want a hybrid model that just goes under the radar without drawing attention to itself, this is like the perfect car for that. Now it does have Kia's uh, corporate grille, which is starting to become standard on almost all of their models, including the flagship Stinger and K900 models. It just uh, pinches in here with this little silver bit. It's almost like a bow tie of sorts with these little uh, black nubs in the middle. I like Kia's uh, corporate grille and I think it looks right at home here on this little crossover. Now I'm going to take you around back. Now the side profile prints very small in the uh, three-quarter panel. It's really not a very big uh, SUV. It's more of a hatchback that happens to be raised up a little bit. And the ride is very car-like, although we'll talk about that a little later. Around back, I see a little bit of Jeep Grand Cherokee, or actually Jeep Cherokee in the design with the way that this roof uh, just kind of slants back flat and it just has these kind of bulgy taillights. I see a lot of Jeep Cherokee in the back of this design, which is pretty good. I think the new Jeep Cherokee uh, looks pretty good in the front now that they've redesigned it. I think the back of the Cherokee has always looked nice as well. All right, so now I'm going to take you inside of the Nero to talk about uh, what's special inside. And there's going to be a lot to talk about there. So when I come up to the car, you may have noticed the mirror unfolds to welcome you. And because we have the EX Premium, we have keyless entry. So just push the button and unlock it. And we're going to step on inside. Now inside, this interior is rather... Uh, Kia-like. It's not necessarily weird in any way, shape, or form like a lot of hybrids are. So that means that it really doesn't uh, stand out as a hybrid. And, you know, somebody would get in this car and think that it could just be a normal crossover of sorts. Now, the only thing that is a dead giveaway are these little blue uh, trim vents here. There's blue trim around all of the air vents and there is a thing that says eco plug-in on the dashboard But other than that it is a uh, very normal in here It's very normal like normal radio controls normal air vent controls even a normal uh, PRND style shifter, which is really interesting a lot of hybrids go for a sort of weird Teletubby look So just a normal starter button to start it up and you'll get your systems check and that uh, normal key startup noise, which you can turn off in uh, all Kia models. Now, this is a giveaway, the gauge cluster that you're in a hybrid vehicle because of course there is no tachometer. Instead, you have this charge, eco, and power gauge. Uh, when you get on the power a little bit, it'll go further up the eco needle until when you're flooring it, it'll start getting in that power band. Uh, and then when you get on the brakes or coast, it'll go down into that charging zone. And then you have your normal speedometer over here and it says Nero and obviously Eco plug-in on this model, it says something slightly different on the regular Kia uh, Nero. 
Now in the middle, you have this really nice color LCD display. So now I have it showing trip. Uh, there's your speed, your driving styles. We've been driving quite aggressively uh, recently. Your energy flow, which also can be mirrored on the main screen so you can see what's driving the Nero at any given time, whether it be the battery or the engine. You have your engine temperature. And then you have your map, which can show navigation prompts. You have your adaptive cruise control in this car, which is our fully loaded EX Premium model. And the adaptive cruise control does bring you all the way to a dead stop. However, it then deactivates after a second and makes you get on the brakes. I don't know why Kia doesn't just program it to hold until you get back on the gas pedal like it does in the Stinger. Uh, it's just a programming thing, so I don't know why Kia doesn't do that on some of its more inexpensive models. Uh, we have our tire pressure, we have our attention alert gauge, and then we have all of our settings that we can fiddle around with here. And you'll notice that I've been doing about 50 53.2 miles per gallon. I've seen as high as 56 while driving this car around, which is excellent. And the other interesting thing about this gauge cluster is you can see here we have our battery range and then we have our normal gas tank range here. So we have 278 miles remaining and only three miles of electric range remaining. So we'll have to plug it in soon. Or we can use our third secret method of charging that I will tell you about later when we go and drive this car. But as you can see, I've driven 261 miles with this car since I've had it and I still have 278 miles of gas range left and that just shows how flexible this car can be. So the steering wheel is pretty normal Kia fare. It's a little, uh, it's not really a super sporty wheel, but it does have these nice bolsters here and you do get blue stitching on the inside of it, on the Nero here, which is really nice. It's a nice touch. Uh, you have all of your radio controls and voice command here. The voice command that Kia uses is generally excellent and it does have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto in it as well. And then you have some of your uh, controls to control the main screen as well as your, crew, your adaptive cruise control. Now over here we have some of our safety controls, traction control, lane departure warning, we have our uh, blind spot monitoring, and then we have our lights. Um, I actually turned the lane departure warning off, it's one of those systems that I found very intrusive while driving. And then we have some of the uh, controls for charging, so you can set it to charge on low peak hours where the energy rates are cheaper. Because we have the fully loaded model here, we have uh, our driver memory controls. We have two of those. We have our auto folding mirrors that I showed you earlier. And then we have auto touch open up and down front uh, windows. And then the rear mirror windows are just powered. So I'm not going to spend too much time talking about Kia's generally excellent infotainment system. I think it's really great. Here's our map. Um, I think it looks really, really good. Um, you can plug in your addresses using uh, Google search, which is not actually activated in our tester model, but it will be on yours. The thing that's interesting here is this PHEV menu. So this takes us into some of our hybrid functions. We have our little tree diagram that grows as we drive more eco-friendly. It'll tell us our MPG history. So there you go. I drove 60 miles that day and averaged 61.5 MPG. So that's pretty darn good. We have our EV range, so it'll tell us how far we can expect to get on our current EV range, which is only three miles at the moment. So we'll have to charge that up. We have our charging settings so that we can determine how long we want it to charge on any given day when we plug it in. We can actually find uh, charging stations that are nearby and gas stations as well. Uh, you do have a nice backup camera that has trajectory as well. So it'll turn as you turn the wheel. Uh, it's pretty easy to use and you do have those parking sensors which I actually shut off in normal driving because uh, when I would come up to cars on traffic it would actually start binging at me which was kind of annoying. You do have all of your dummy controls here which I love to see. I love being able to just hit it instead of having to go on the touch screen. I don't like cars that rely on a touch screen entirely. Um, and then you have your climate controls down here. When you turn them you start to see those pop up and you can also push the climate button down here to have a full display on the menu. Um, I really like the way they do that although you know a lot of uh, cars that cost a little more than this will have a screen down here so that you can see the temperature without having to duplicate it up here but that was just a nice easy way for Kia to save some costs. Uh, down here we have our heated and ventilated seat controls on our fully loaded EX trim so I have my nice ventilated seat going in this 
uh, in t intense Florida heat. Although we do have this nice gray leather interior, which really doesn't get too hot. And that gray interior does have blue stitching uh, that I really like, actually. It matches the theme of this car, which is uh, eco in blue instead of uh, green or some other colors that they could have chosen. And you also even have that blue stitching here on the shift boot, which is a normal PRND. And then it has this S mode over here with the plus and minus to let you shift gears. And another thing interesting happens, we're going to tap it over in S mode, but I'm going to come over here and show you what happens. I tap it in S mode and there you go, you see it changes a little bit. So now we have our S there. If I go to shift, that turns into a one because we're in first gear and vice versa if I decide to shift gears. And then we have our RPM gauge up here which will show us where the engine is at in the rev range, which is interesting and you kind of want to know that while you're driving around with the gas engine on. That's something that the uh, regular Nero didn't do. It didn't actually tell you what gear you're in, which uh, I'm glad Kia has actually fixed that. And then over here in front of the shifter, we have our USB port with two 12 volt outlets to charge. You also have a key wireless charging pad right here. So if you put your phone there, it will charge wirelessly if you have that in your phone. There's also a second USB port in here, although I have my water bottle and some other goodies in there. All right, so now we're gonna take you around back. The back seat is pretty roomy. I can sit behind myself, no problem with plenty of uh, knee room here. And there's also plenty of headroom here. Uh, I have absolutely no problems with uh, headroom in this car because it is that tall riding SUV. Uh, rear seat occupants do get two air vents that they can control, which is really nice, uh, especially in a car of this price, uh, the way that this car starts off. And you can even charge up with a normal home outlet, which is pretty convenient as well. And the middle seat is actually decently comfortable because there's only this small tunnel. There's really not that much uh, of a bump there, so you really can get three passengers in this, although they are going to be bumping elbows quite a bit. And you even have these nice uh, nets. I remember uh, I've been in a few Audis uh, from a while ago that had these nice nets back here. Uh, I really like it. It's a real actual high quality item here. And the interior does have some hard plastics on the dashboard, but overall, I think that this interior is done uh, really well. It's done at a budget and it's done to sort of be eco-friendly, but I don't think that anybody would get in here and think that this is a extremely cheap car. I think it's a uh, pretty nice overall. And then finally, I'm going to show you the trunk. Now this isn't the largest trunk in the business, but it is pretty large. You can fit a ton of items in here. There's plenty of space. Here's where they give you your charger and it even says Eco Dynamics on it. It's Velcro down so it doesn't roll around when you drive this car. I'm just gonna unzip that and show you. There's your charger where you can plug in the car. You do have an extra speaker back here. It is a Harman Kardon system on this top trim Kia, which is pretty nice. It's not revolutionary, but it is a very nice sounding sound system. And then underneath we have our tire repair kit because of course the battery takes up where we would have our spare tire. All right, so the only thing we have left to do is take the Kia Nero for a spin and tell you how it drives. All right, so we're behind the wheel of the uh, 2018 Kia Nero plug-in. And part of the reason that I love this car over a lot of hybrids is that Kia didn't fall into the same trap of thinking that hybrid buyers want a car that drives terribly. A car that doesn't drive like anything else. It just has sloppy handling, sloppy steering, sloppy braking, uh, and no power, and it's slow. Kia didn't do any of that. So one of the things that's really nice about this car is, so it's got a 1.6 liter gas engine that produces a little over 100 horsepower, and this is the plug-in version, so we have a little bit more powerful electric motor and battery combination. Although the way that it adds up uh, on Kia's estimation is about the same as a regular uh, Nero, so you don't really get a power or torque bump from the electric motor. It's still 139 horsepower and 195 foot-pounds of torque, which are not terrible numbers for a regular hatchback uh, or a small crossover in this case. 
And that's enough with the six-speed dual-clutch transmission. Yes, this is a dual-clutch transmission, not a CVT, to get it to zero to 60 in about 8.6 seconds, which is a lot faster than cars like the Toyota Prius, which can't do it in under 10 seconds. Um, and to drive, Kia made this car drive like a lot of its other models. So I've driven a Kia Soul recently, and this car feels remarkably similar to that. Uh, the steering isn't quite as precise, but it's not bad whatsoever. Uh, the dual clutch is extremely smooth and it keeps you engaged with the car. You don't really want to fall asleep at the wheel uh, with this car. It's pretty darn good, actually. And one of the things that Kia absolutely mastered with this car, and did so better than almost any other hybrid I've driven, even cars that cost double or even triple this, is the brake pedal feel. A lot of these hybrids have uh, brake regeneration, and this car is no different. It does uh, put back energy that's captured when you get on the brakes, but this does so in a smooth, linear way. I'm braking now, and I'm, I'm keeping the same weight on the pedal, and it came to a nice, even, smooth start. I've driven a lot of hybrid cars, and when you first get in them, it's a bit of a uh, disorientation. You have to get yourself used to the brake pedal feel, uh, and that's because when the regen does kick in, the brake pedal tends to have a different feel. So you'll be on the pedal and you'll have to move your foot accordingly to get the right braking pressure, and that's a feel that I absolutely do not like. And Kia, of all companies, managed to iron that out almost perfectly in this car. Now, I'm actually not using the six-speed dual clutch at the moment, and that's because I'm driving it in fully electric mode, something that you can't do on the standard Nero. When I drove the standard Nero, uh, when you would start from a from a red light and try and get on the, on, on the pedal, if you gave it anything more than a very brisk pace, the engine would kick on and you'd be driving it as a normal hybrid once again. In this, there's a little button down here that lets you switch from hybrid mode to fully EV mode. And this car will go all the way up to highway speeds without having the gas motor kick on. So I've driven this all the way up to 70 and even 80 miles an hour on the highway without having the gas engine kick on. And that's really cool. Now, when you drive it on fully electric mode, you'll get about 26 miles from a full charge, depending on the way you drive. If you're trying to floor it and you're driving at highway speeds, it may not last quite as long, uh, but I've noticed that I am able to actually hit that 26 mile range on mine. And you can get all the way fully charged, uh, plugging in at home on a 110 outlet, that'll get you charged up in about seven and a half hours. Or if you install one of the fast chargers or you visit a fast charger uh, out in the public, you'll be able to do it in about two and a half hours, which is a huge improvement. However, as I mentioned when we were walking around this car, there is a secret third way that you can also charge up the batteries. Now, this has a normal PRND shifter, which is really interesting. A lot of these hybrid cars have one of those weird Teletubby head looking, you know, shifters that you have to push with your finger and they move in all sorts of different crazy directions. This is just a normal PRND uh, style gate. But then when you tap it over to the, to the left, you have S mode with a little plus and a little minus. In this mode, I'm flooring it and that engine is on that engine is getting me up to speed as fast as possible. And what it's also doing is it's putting energy back into that battery. I was a little bit surprised by this. When you put it in sport mode, you're actually charging the battery as fast as it can possibly charge. I had a journey of about 45 minutes uh, to get back home and I only had about four miles of electric range and I tossed it in sport mode. And by the time I got home, I had over 20 miles of electric range. That's almost fully charged in about 45 minutes. That's faster than you can do even on level two charging. So this is the secret way to charge up the car. If you don't want to plug it in and wait several hours for the batteries to be full, just go out, find your favorite back road, put it in sport mode, and floor it. It's not rapid, but it's decently quick. That's 60 right there. It's not bad. The other thing that happens when you put it in sport mode is you get this uh, new gauge that shows up. So it gives you your RPMs because your gas engine is on and you might be curious to see what RPM the engine's on at because you, uh, you don't have a normal tachometer, of course. You also get to see what gear you're in if you are uh, shifting it yourself. So it's kind of nice if you want to have a sporty experience. It's not exactly sporty, but it is 
fun. The other thing that this car does really really neatly is uh, it makes the steering heavier. This is a trick that a lot of Hyundai Kia products do actually. Uh, even in a regular Hyundai Elantra or a Kia Optima will do this. When you put it in sport mode, the steering weights up a bit so that you have a little bit more, just like a sporty feel. It doesn't necessarily change uh, the feedback that you get from the wheel. There isn't a lot of that there. But what it does do is make it feel like you're driving a bit of a heavier, uh, sportier car. And I kind of like that. I kind of like that in all of the Hyundai Kia products, actually. And this is actually my favorite mode to drive it in. It just feels really cool. I like having the heavier steering. Steering. The only thing that really holds it back are those skinny little tires, which are actually really fun. When you take a corner too quickly, you'll get a little bit of tire squeal from those skinny little eco tires, which is an extremely good way to have fun. You know, a lot of people would argue that it's better to have a slow car going as fast as possible than a car like a Ferrari going slow. And somewhat agree with that. This is really fun. When I when I get this on the limit of grip, it feels uh, like genuine terror. Now, the one downside to driving it in sport mode is it may be the fastest way to charge up the battery. I've actually given it, uh, it went up from five to six miles just as I was talking but it has a significant toll on your fuel economy. Now, this car does a lot better on fuel economy than the regular Kia Niro that I tested. That car uh, got about high 40s, maybe I hit 50 miles per gallon in that car, but I really hovered around 48 miles per gallon in that car. This car I've been hovering more around, This it says right now 52 and a half miles a gallon, and I've seen as high as 56 when I'm actually driving this normally on my commute. So I've seen as high as 56 miles per gallon in this car. Unfortunately, when you plop it in sport mode, you're gonna see closer to about 40 miles per gallon, which is still generally excellent for a gas engine car that's also having to work to charge up batteries. That's not really bad at all when you think about it. But I think sport mode is just a fantastic way to get the batteries charged up without having to sacrifice two and a half hours of your life at a charging station. It's really cool. It's kind of like the BMW i8 actually does the same thing. So would I recommend the hybrid, uh, the plug-in hybrid Kia Niro over a standard one? I would. If you live uh, 26 miles or less from work and you can plug in, you're going to be able to do your entire commute without having the gas engine kick on. Even if you live uh, a little bit further than that, you can plug it in and charge it and you're gonna get most of the way there. If you live under 26 miles, for instance, if you live say 10 miles from work, you can get there and back and then plug in when you get home without even having to use your gasoline engine. Uh, I think that's pretty cool. It does cost about $4,000 more than a standard equivalent to Kia Niro but you're gonna get a $4,000 tax credit back from the government uh, while that still lasts uh, for buying this car. And that almost offsets all the cost of buying this plug-in version. So the plug-in Nero is the one I'd have. As far as hybrid cars as a whole, I think the Kia Niro has instantly become my favorite. The Toyota Prius was never a car that I really liked. It's dead feeling. I don't like the way it looks. Uh, Toyota's infotainment could do with a major update, whereas Kia's is just absolutely fantastic right now. I think that if you're in the market for a hybrid car and you don't want the outlandish looks of the Prius, this is the car for you. This has a little bit of a higher ride height, which people absolutely love right now. We see how well crossovers are doing in the market. And this car just floats under the radar. Other than the little blue uh, streaks on the uh, front grille and the back grille, there really isn't even that much to give away that this is even a hybrid vehicle at all. And I love that. The Kia Niro is the hybrid car that we would recommend. This is the one that we think you should buy. If you liked that video and you'd like to see more, be sure to subscribe to the Car Buzz YouTube channel and like us on Facebook. And be sure to download the Car Buzz app on iOS and Android. See you in the next video.